Summary of Flowering Judas by Catherine and Porter Flowering Judas is a brief glimpse at the life of Laura, an American woman who is 22 years old and has come to Mexico after the Mexican Revolution to help the socialist cause. At the start of the story, Laura goes home and finds Bragioni waiting for her. Bragioni plays his guitar and sings out of tune, and Laura doesn't want to listen to him. Bragioni pays for Laura's room and board and tries to seduce her all the time, but Laura politely turns him down every night. Bragioni is a bitter former rebel who has given in to greed. He takes pride in his expensive clothes and the power he has in the area. Laura worries that she will turn out to be like Bragioni, who is pessimistic and willing to give in. In the meantime, Laura teaches at a school for indigenous children, goes to union protests, and sees political prisoners, bringing them letters, cigarettes, and drugs. She also prays in secret at a rundown Catholic church, hoping that no one will see her because they would make a big deal out of it. Laura has a spell on a lot of men, not just Bragioni. When Laura goes to the nearby town of Cornavaca, a former captain in the Zapatista army tries to teach her how to ride a horse, but he only scares the animal. Laura had already learned how to ride a horse in Arizona. The head of the typographer's union, a ragged singer, sings in front of Laura's house every night until Lupe, Laura's maid, tells her to throw the flowers from the Judas tree at him to get him to leave, which, unbeknownst to Laura, only makes the boy want to sing more. Ragioni still has power and uses it to play off two rival groups, those of the Polish agitator and the Romanian agitator, against each other. Ragioni shows Laura his silver gun belt and makes fun of her for being foolish by saying, everything turns to dust in the hand, to gall on the tongue. Laura thinks she is too idealistic and not at home in the world. She wonders if she will become like Mrs. Bragioni, a long-suffering realist who marches in picket lines and fights for the rights of the girls who work in the cigarette factory but spends her nights crying for Bragioni, who comes home from his affairs to make her feel better. At the end of the story, Laura feels terrible about the death of Eugenio, a prisoner who overdosed on pills Laura gave him instead of waiting for Bragioni to make a deal to get him out. Eugenio is written off by Bragioni as a fool that they are glad to get rid of, but to Laura, he is a hero who has the purity she hasn't found in Mexico. She goes to sleep and has a dream about Eugenio's ghost, who tells her she is a killer and that he has come to kill her. He tells her to eat the flowers from the Judas tree and then says that it is his body and blood. At the end of the story, Laura wakes up shaking and afraid to go back to sleep. About the author. Catherine and Porter was raised in convents in Texas and Louisiana. She was the daughter of Daniel Boone and O. Henry. In 1906, she ran away to become an actress and singer. When she moved back to Texas in 1914, she started working for the magazine's critic and Rocky Mountain News, both based in Denver, Colorado. There, she wrote reviews of books and sometimes political analysis. During the 1920s, she went to Mexico to help left-wing causes. This is reflected in Flowering Judas, the title story of her first collection of short stories, which won a prized Guggenheim Award. Even though Porter's next two collections, Hacienda in 1934 and Pale Horse, Pale Rider in 1942, also got good reviews, most people didn't know who she was until 1962, when her only book, Ship of Fools, became a bestseller. Just as her time in Mexico influenced the stories in Flowering Judas, her trip by boat to Bremerhaven, Germany, in 1932 influenced the stories in Ship of Fools. Porter kept fighting for social justice and women's rights, and her later works focused on these issues. Porter's fame continued to grow, and in 1966, her collection of short stories won the Pulitzer Prize. She died in 1980 in Silver Spring, Maryland. She left behind the letters that became the letters of Catherine and Porter, along with her popular recipe for mole poblano with chili and chocolate, which she had learned in Mexico. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.